let's talk about the domain and the range of the cosine and the sine. Let's do domain first. And we'll look at the cosine of V and the sine of V. And V doesn't have a degree symbol next to it. So we're thinking of V as being measured in radians. And if our angle is being measured in radians, we can also think of our angle as a distance. V can be any number. And the cosine of V and the sine of V are both defined. Because V is just a distance, it tells us how far we walk. And V can be a large number, V can be a small number, however large or small it is, we can walk that distance around the unit circle. If a V is negative, that just tells us we're walking clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Wise. So this V can be any real number. And stated in terms of the domain, this says that the cosine and the sine both have as their domains the set of all real numbers. And although it's probably easiest to think of V as a distance here, this is true whether V is measured in radians or whether V is measured in degrees. What about range? Let's remind ourselves what the range is. It's all of the possible outputs. If you're looking at the cosine of V, remember that your output is the X coordinate. of a point on the unit circle. So you look at the points on the unit circle and you look at their X coordinates. Well, here's X equals negative one. And here's X equals positive one. And values where X is less than negative one aren't on the unit circle. And values where X is greater than positive one aren't on the unit circle. But if you select any number between negative one and positive one, there's a point on the unit circle with that X coordinate. So that tells us that the range 
Yinge of the cosine is all of the numbers between negative one and one. And as for the sign, it's a similar argument. The sign is the y coordinate, and your y coordinates are stuck. Between a negative one and one, just like your x coordinates are. So the range of the sine is also with a closed interval from negative one to one. 